Hi and welcome to this first instalment of Perfumery Ingredients. In this uh, small series I'll be looking at the ingredients used in uh, perfumery. Today we'll be looking at ambergris or ombre gris, meaning grey amber. It's a solid waxy substance of dull grey or blackish colour. It's produced in the digestive systems of sperm whales. My particular bottle here is not um, pure ambergris, it's a synthetic version because getting hold of proper ambergris is nigh on impossible for the likes of myself. Basically, uh, when a sperm whale gets a stomach or throat irritant, often a squid beak or other remains of cuttlefish that cannot be digested, they cover it in a greasy, morbid substance before eventually casting it out. It's the same process as an oyster will use when it has a grain of sand irritating its insides. It will cover the irritant in a smooth, shiny substance over and over again. The end result is the grain no longer causes a problem and we get a pearl. Ambergris is extremely rare and very expensive. A 2.4 pound piece of ambergris was found on a beach in Wales. It was sold for £11,000 at an auction in 2015 to a French buyer. Freshly expelled ambergris is extraordinarily foul smelling. However, a strange thing happens when these lumps drift around the ocean. Exposed to sunlight, oxidisation and salt water, it begins to cure and harden. As it ages, it acquires a sweeter scent. It has earthy notes like mulch or wet mossy pine forests, combined with marine notes like sea spray and ocean breezes, or the water you find in rock pools that have been there a little too long. It also retains a definite faecal undertone. In general, lighter coloured pieces have a brighter, sweeter fragrance and have been at sea for a much longer time. The chemistry of ambergris consists of innumerable compounds, it's the amalgamation of all these together which is responsible for the intricate fragrance of ambergris. In its solid state, ambergris, like real musk, will hold its odour for years, even centuries. Perfumers dissolve the solid ambergris into a tincture using alcohol and then use in their blends. In perfumery, it's used as a base note to add depth. It's also a fixative which is an ingredient that allows the scent to last much longer. However, it should be used very carefully as the smallest amount could make or break a perfume. And it's really good practice when creating a perfume to work from base to top to avoid uh, ruining and wasting heart and top ingredients by, you know, a slight slip up in the base notes. Although ambergris was formerly highly prized and still is by some of the most affluent perfumers, it is very hard to obtain and very expensive and has now largely been replaced by the synthetic version called Ambroxan. In order to keep the cost of the consumer down, most people do use the synthetic version and it is reported to be a pretty good substitute. Now it's uh, good to note that it's the use of um, ambergris is actually illegal in certain countries. In Australia, under federal law, the export and import of ambergris uh, for commercial purposes is, is illegal. The United States, the possession and trade of ambergris is prohibited by the Endangered Species Act of 1973. Uh, however, it is still legal in most countries including the United Kingdom, France, Switzerland and New Zealand. Well, that's it for this first episode of Perfume Ingredients. Hope you enjoyed it. I shall be posting more from time to time. Take care now. Bye-bye.